Fuck yeah. Harmon Town is now in session. I'm your guest comptroller, Steve Agee. Please give it up for your game master, Spencer Crittenden. And the mayor of Harmon Town, Dan Harmon. So I'm so fat and sad and tired. And I was just like, I know it looks dumb, the fucking at at on the fat, fat. I, I know I'm just setting myself up, but who cares? I don't care. I don't care about your dumb opinions. Zero fucks given. Zero as fucks given. As the kids given. say. Yeah. I hate that- the kids. <laughs> Did you, do you do you do you remember the the I was just I was just sitting today and I was thinking about uh, the, the, the it just hit me because we were all paying attention to it was all too intense at the time it wasn't a time when you wanted to like draw attention to one part of it but remember that halfway through like right halfway through the horrible head count of his victims like hitting its peak that Bill Cosby's Twitter account tweeted go ahead meme me. Remember that? Oh yeah, dude. And it was like, yeah. and everyone was just like, okay. I, I, I just can't believe. I mean, like, there must have been some like twenty-eight-year-old kid that was like, look, you gotta, you gotta go counterintuitive right now. Yeah. You gotta, uh, you, you gotta remind people of the pudding pops and the. And what kids like to do these days is they take a picture and and and, and you and you just like you know those pictures that you you, you threaten to sue people uh, for for p- putting on the internet because you you've always been such a hound dog about your likeness. <laughs> Payback's a bitch. The House of Cosby's shutting down, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, I finally got him. I got him. Full circle. Uh, Karma. But but anyway, yeah. I mean, what did you? How would you? That's crazy that people are like that that, that. that someone was like, yeah, this is a good. Just put your. Who cares? That's I, like I, when they when they sent out uh, do the hashtag Ask Trump. Yeah, remember I, I, that? Yeah, I mean, like, like you can't see in advance the, the like what's gonna like, like that that's not gonna work. That the, the, the BuzzFeed articles aren't gonna be showcasing the kindest things. Anyways, whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because tonight's a super moon, blood moon, blood moon. Yeah, it's funny. Watch it jiggle. Uh, the ad at's walking. Is that that get the ad tow cable? Ha- get the tow cable. The ad at has a has a Death Star in it, um, with a with a bowling ball. The the uh, uh, so Spencer was sitting outside my house. I, Why? I sure I was. Know. I'm talking to the authorities now. No, Spencer was waiting for me, and I was letting my dogs poo poo, and uh, we were gonna we we're gonna come to the show. And there's super moon traffic all over Los Angeles tonight. People are so very excited it's about fucked this. Fucked up. And I, and uh, when I came back to the car, it. you said that. No, Dustin. Well, I we, like Dustin. Well, you want du- you want you want Dustin to come out and. No, he it. he told this story. I don't. I do not want him out. All here. right. All right. <laughs> So D- Dustin, Dustin w- was also in the car, and I can- <laughs> he said the guy because there's people walking all over Las Feliz. I guess they're going up to the yeah. Griffith Observatory to look at the yep. supermoon, and uh, and the- a guy drove by uh, Spencer's car while they were waiting for me, and he stuck his head out the window as if to ask for directions, and said, "Where the moon?" He just pointed up. Did I get that right? Where the moon? Where the moon? Hey, where the moon? Where, where the, the moon? moon? Where the moon? Like a New Yorker kind uh, of. Guy. It's uh, if I uh, go down to third, <laughs> and uh, there's a you'll see a stop and go, and uh, uh, there's a there's a gas station kitty corner from it. You don't know, is that a regional thing, kitty corner? Well, anyways, it's the moon. Uh, <clears throat> But also, you can't see it from here, right? No, but you can't, you can't drive it. to it in the best <laughs> in the best light. 
I, those people that are walking up like like pa- like up Hillhurst right now with like a can of Coors in their hand, casually strolling to look at the moon at the Griffith Observatory, like yeah. like I have no, I don't think they've ever, I don't think they know how far they're walking. Yeah, it's like four or five uh, miles. I think it's like people who see this. I can see the looks are from here in, in Las Vegas. You know, it's like <laughs> then three hours later you're puking in a bush. <laughs> It's a, it's a pyramid. It's right there. It's got a big light on it. And it's, it's, Where the moon? That shit's like a real pyramid. It's far away. Um, all right. What am, I don't know what I'm looking at. I, it's it's a it, this is a this is a, a a bunch of notes about about our our delightful guests that we're going to talk about. And there's only one thing that's not that, and it says where the moon. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my note. I was says. I was once in my car and I was at the Denny's parking lot over at uh, Gower Gulch, and there were a bunch of guys. Uh, hanging out in the parking lot, and I overheard one of them go, "N word, the North Star ain't a star; it's a fucking planet." <laughs> and, and, the, and the other guy goes, "How the fuck do you know it's a planet?" He goes, "Cause the fucking thing's twinkling, motherfucker." <laughs> oh no, he goes, "Cause it's not twinkling." He oh, goes, right. "Stars twinkle, planets say, don't uh, twinkle." All uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a Richard Pryor. Like remember Richard Pryor would do dialogue between two yeah. two of his yes. two people from the neighborhood. Yeah. That's how he became famous. Yeah. And Bob Newhart would uh, be, became famous for talking on the phone. He'd do he'd do phone calls. Hey, uh, uh, hello. Uh, so, anyways, I thought, uh, uh, who who uh, who who invented uh, luggage? What was that phone call about? Uh, hello. Uh, uh, the box company. <laughs> uh, yes, some of our boxes do have handles on them. Uh, it, well, 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 that's all. That's a box with a handle. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I can't. You know, three hours later, standing ovation. I don't know how he does it. <sighs> I've, if you de- if you're detecting a little bit of like, uh, I guess I kind of went after Bob Newhart there a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I and I didn't realize that I had it in for him, but I just I just remembered that I did I did something at the Creative Arts Emmys on stage with Joel McHale, and it, when I watched the telecast, because I felt like I killed, but it did cut to a shot of Bob Newhart going, <laughs> <laughs> like he looked like a, a mosquito flew up his nose. Yeah, uh, and I was like, come on, your come phone on, man. space work was really good though. Thank you. Oh, it's a comp controller, Steve Agee, everybody. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on this super moon Sunday. Where's Jeff? Uh, he's, 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 he had a, he had a bad burrito. Uh, he's pooping. He's pooping, yo. Look at, look at this Pikachu skateboarder. You got, you got, is that a weapon? You're, you're terrifying. Like, oh, Jesus shit. Christ! It's, a, it's plastic. It's plastic. It shoots lasers, though. All right. When his health's full, uh, it's a master. Wh- what's sword. your name? Can, can I ask? Yeah, it's Mike. Mike. Yes. <laughs> You're from Canada. Yeah. Oh man. Don't come near me. Yeah. I hurt people. Jesus. It's true. What in the world? I. I, I I guess they they have the 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 weapons in Canada are plastic, so jokes like that are funnier there. <laughs> don't don't come near me. I I hurt people. So, have you have you have you read a a paper from here like in the last three hours? We hurt people, like, and it's uh, we're we're bummed out about it. We're trying not to, <laughs> like we're. we're <laughs> yeah, there's a drunk guy just out back of the nerd melt when I was walking in, and I I, I was glad he did not stab me. <laughs> and just before anyone says anything, he was white. He was a white drunk man. This is not racial motivated fear. That's nice. I'm glad. Turned out just drunk. Just I, I, I pictured him as white immediately. Thank you. I guess his name was Frank. How no. the fuck do you know his name is Frank? <laughs> because that's he 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 firmly grasped my hand while looking to me. You touched him? He touched me. <laughs> that sounded. Let horrible. me make one thing clear. <laughs> and he he said, touched and he, me. And he said, "Can I be Frank?" <laughs> Yeah, Spencer, his name's not Frank. He yeah. Was, uh, he just wanted to break down some hardcore statistics with you about homelessness. I was like, you could be whatever you want to be, man. 
don't stab me. No, what me. did he say? He grabbed you and he, he said. He, he grabbed my hand and was shaking it. And he's like, I'm Frank. <laughs> and I was like, oh, great. I'm Spencer. And he's like, great, great, great. And he's like, and I'm like, yeah, it's great. And he's like, I like it. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I think. And he's like, you're thinking? You're thinking? And I'm like, yeah, most of the time. Yeah, I'm thinking. And he's like, that's good. That's good. <laughs> It was, it and then he was just, the rest of the time, he was just commenting on how great it was that I was thinking. And I thought he was going to turn into an angry mode at some point. Like, you know, like, this guy's thinking too much. But uh, he, he, he cooled off, and then he shook someone else's hand, and then he wandered off. <laughs> First of all, that sounds like, he sounds like uh, uh, that uh, smart bot online, you know, like the, the one Smarter where you, child? The, the, one where, the one where it's just based on previous people's entries. So yeah. even though it's really cool what it says to you, the conversation doesn't, it, it only lasts couplets. So you go like, hey, how are you? And it says something amazing like, like, hey, what do you think of John Travolta? And you're like, whoa, you like John Travolta? And he's like, it's what like, do you like? Yeah. <laughs> I, that's that's what it's like. I, I, I like popcorn. Uh, pop 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 my corn. Yeah. And you're like, okay. That's how it is to talk to my roommate when I'm talking to him. It feels like that because I'm just like, hey, how's it going? And he's like, how you doing? And I'm like, I'm doing good. And he's like, doing good is good. And I'm like, what? And he's like, doing my what? And I'm like, uh, you're not, this Christ. is not a conversation. <laughs> and he's like, conversations are doing my what? And then he just wanders out. <laughs> I'm like, ah, this remember, guy's a robot. Remember when we were at that bar in Culver City and uh, and those guys came in? <laughs> we were, oh, my like, God. Got, and they were trying to like... The, now, that well, was racial motivated fear. When, well, it was because it was like an all... It was like... like I, 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 yeah, because they were... It was... Uh, what is the... What is there the was, it was this old, old white guy's bar. There was, there was just old, old dudes hanging out. And then we wandered in. And then these Mexican guys showed up, and they were really fucking high, which isn't a problem, but they seemed to carry on as if if people knew they were high, they'd get arrested. Right. So it created a lot of tension right off the bat. And it was not dialed down from that point on. And it felt like the it felt like the bigger guy was like the littler guy's uncle or something. It didn't feel like they were hanging out as friends. It was almost like like this is the equivalent of of, of in the Midwest of being dragged into the woods to go deer hunting. Uh, it's just like, come on, I'm going to take you into this white people's bar, and we're gonna we're gonna get yelled at, um, and then you'll be a man. Um, because he really wanted, like, he wanted to get yelled at, but but everybody was like, like, okay, it's, uh, like, 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 yeah. Eh. So the the younger guy, he was really like drunk and high, but he was having a great time, and he just wanted to talk about football, and he was in a great mood, and everyone was loving it. But we were loving it too much for the older guy because he thought that we were making fun of the little guy, but we were just he was great, you know. He right, was we were just yes ending him. He wanted to talk about like moon boots or whatever it came up. Yeah, and we're like, oh, what about moon boots? You remember? He's like, come on, come on, man. He's drunk. But then the weird thing is, then he'd turn to the kid and go, shut the fuck up. What did shut I up. fucking tell shut you? Shut the fuck up. Fucking shut embarrassing up. me. Shut, shut the, the fuck, fuck up. up. You <laughs> shut up. I'm talking. You shut the fuck up. It was crazy. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It and was, that, that was a burst that, you know, that was a half burst. And, and he and would it, go and it full burst. Like 20 times. But yeah, the, all the time. And the craziest part of it was that the only, he kept, no matter what topic came up, like, 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 like he didn't get the, like, conflict he wanted. So it'd be like, I'd put my glass down on top of my laptop on the bar, and he'd go, like, you just going to put that there? And, I, and, I, and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you, 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 want, you want liquid on your laptop? And I'm like, yeah, I do. I mean, <laughs> like it's, it's aluminum. It's fine. And he's like, okay, man, all right. And I, I was like, okay, he cares about my laptop. That's a good start. And like, he's like, hey, man, you don't like night bowling? Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> so we're like talking about bowling. bowling? We're like, we're like ta- he's trying to pick fights about <laughs> bowling. And then, but then we, we're not going to fight him. So we're just, like, like, like we're, just ta- we're just agreeing with him about bowling. And we're like, yeah, there used to be a lot of good bowling alleys around. Here and he's like, yeah. Then what happened? <laughs> and, and 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 McKenna Jesus goes, uh, McKenna goes like, well, you know, like they were real bowling alleys, and now it's all that night bowling shit. And he's like, night bowling shit. <laughs> and and McKenna's like, 
Yeah, you know, like the glowing like, ball, like, yeah, the black like lights. Everything's glow in the dark, and there's like <laughs> ecstasy music playing, and they're doing that at like <laughs> three in the three in the three in the afternoon. And he's like, I was like, and, and, and I was like, and then you know, move on and go like, hey, what is this? What is what do you think of this napkin or something? But the the, 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 the guy kept focusing on McKenna, and he's like, so you don't like night bowling, huh? It's like, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what in the what? What, what you then, <laughs> you you are in the if the idea is that this is threatening your gang is the worst and then the other guy would be all like yeah man night bowling it's like the balls are green he's like shut the fuck up shut up oh yeah yeah shut the fuck up shut the fuck up you shut the fuck up you shut the fuck up conversation I, I'm not. That's not an exaggeration. No, it was uh, horrible. Uh, it was like the craziest, like ventriloquist act turned, like like, uh, uh, some fucking the weirdest shit. Yeah. I'm not- <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. That's I mean, there's insane. nothing more to say about it. That and was the whole incident, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's and it's you know it's it's really hard to tell that story as funny as it is because we live in sensitive times and you don't want you don't want old old white fat Dan Harmon doing a fucking awesome Mexican <laughs> accent doing his impression of this guy is like of like uh, you know uh, as Donald Trump says I'm I've, lots of lots of them are wonderful people uh, and so many of them are probably listeners and I don't want them to hear me doing like some kind of fucking Jose Jimenez or whatever That's the crazy. you know it was but, 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 but the guy the but the guy shut was up, like. Up. He was, was that insane. archetype, and he had that accent, and he was like, cut that silhouette, and was like, was like trying to like chest up about night bowling <laughs> with with Chris McKenna yeah. at three in the afternoon in Culver City n- n- next to a shuffleboard. McKenna's um, a big dude. Uh, what, oh, they eventually they got the 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 they, they just like they, I can't remember what the final topic was, but it was like it was probably like McKenna didn't like Smurfs or something. It was, it was yeah, it was like, it was it was like well, what's that supposed to mean? And, and McKenna's like, okay, come on, like, like like that's enough. And then the bartender's like, okay, guys, get out of here. And then they just they just did they, they just left. Yeah, they were so, nice about it. Uh, you don't like day drinking. <laughs> Yeah, there, yeah. I, I mean, I, I wish, I wish you could like, like, yeah, bring those guys in through a pneumatic tube and just like ask them questions, like the like the aliens uh, yeah. uh, in ID four, you know, yeah. or something like, like just have a dialogue without there being any kind of resentment or anything, but just get, just get. You could so, like, feel what, what? What do you want from us? Yeah. You could. I, feel I want like... to fight. <laughs> why? Why about night balling? There's so many things to fight about. I'll fight about anything. I was drunk. I don't know. That's crazy. You can feel it was weird because you could feel like the socioeconomic like power structures at play, and everyone was trying to like avoid around them and not get into like you know everyone was trying to tiptoe around everybody else, but that got everyone so stressed out that it came to a head. But you could like see it happening. It was just a bunch of car wrecks as people were trying to accommodate the other and then just not doing a great job of it. Yeah, it's like the 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 fifties or sixties like scenario is. Totally unassuming uh, 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 minority person walks into a uh, unfree white establishment, and and much to their shock, the white people are 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 following some code that they now are finding out existed, and it's very traumatic for them. And it's no better now. Now it's just as bad, except it's just like it's all kind of like it's like w- one person walking in and going like, "Well, this is going to be bad," and then everyone at the bar going like, "Oh shit, we're all white, aren't we?" Uh, 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 don't think about it. Don't think about it. And like everything getting so complicated that yeah. you're in an argument about about paintball. Um, and every, but meanwhile, everything's fine. But everyone's just worried. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's let's make a new friend, shall we? Uh, I'd love to, Dan. But really, an old soulmate. If you think about it, uh, yeah. because I was reading her book today. And uh, yeah, her, her her story is very very interesting. It's a, her latest book is sort of a memoir, and uh, takes you through the whole her whole origin and uh, and everything. And uh, like, I like I, it, I it also it got it got it gets very like surprisingly kind of like uh, revelatory and self exploratory and like confessional. Um, uh, but it's also very 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 light hearted and adorable. But it's a, it's a, it's a good book. You should check it out. Um, uh, we'll let her talk about it and plug it, and you can buy it because I'll probably get the title wrong, even though I just read it because I really listened to it. Uh, so it's just an arrow to me. <laughs> just go out to the store and buy the black arrow. <laughs> It's four hours and 12 minutes at speed 1.25. 
Uh, please welcome uh, someone who has never ever called herself the queen of the nerds, uh, but is called that by other people. Felicia Day. <laughs> I think they like it when you sit near Jabba. Hello. Oh. All right. So I tell this to everybody, but it's 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 uh, what you'll notice is it's five degrees hotter up here, so you can see me sweating. It's, it's your beard. It's not because I'm fat. It's uh, it's cooler out there. I would. Yeah. If you it. shaved your beard, it'd probably be a lot cooler. Now let me speak to that real quick. Oh shit. <laughs> Uh, a beard is actually much like a heat sink where the face heat and sweat, it travels down the beard Ew. and dissipates. Ew. Well, dissipates. It dissipates. Well, I mean, most people would call it dripping, but <laughs> it, it. I'm going to start coughing like a cat in a hairball, which is the last thing you want to wake up to ever. Oh, man. <laughs> that thing. That's anyway, my alarm. Hi. <laughs> you leap right. All right, right Felicia Day, thank you for coming. It's been, it's been, it's been, it seems like overdue that you're here. Uh, to me, it does anyway. I don't know. What, I don't know what you think of. I mean, you invited me. I would yeah. have been here. I would have been here yesterday without an invite, which would have been creepy. Oh, okay. Maybe because I feel like I'm, I'm. I'm. I've always. I've always. You've always been out there on my radar. But I've always been. I mean, one thing that I, we will be talking about is how I think we're both workaholics. I think you expounded on. I mean, you're definitely diagnosable and like had to had to overcome. It. Like, Thanks, I'm, Dan. <laughs> but I mean, you're also now you've gotten past it, and I was like hearing your book and going like, Shit, I'm fucked up, and I gotta, I'm not, I'm not through this. I yet. seem way more together in that book. Like I uh, just the other day, I was like, Well, you're not working on anything. Go ahead and die. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it's still there, but at least I'm I can acknowledge the the fact that oh, you're a workaholic. You should definitely go play Witcher um, because. <laughs> You're working on yourself. Right. I, my, my therapist says that when I'm playing Witcher, I'm actually just satisfying an addiction to the nervous system being like kind of stressed out. But Is I'm that not, true? I mean, she's not like anti-video game. Sounds like it. Well... I mean, she, it took her a long time to get there. Like, she, she never said, stop playing video games. But she's like, come on. Like how, like, how come you're not relaxed after you play these things? Which is, like, makes me think of okay. my mom, like, when you were 10 years old, and you'd go, like, God damn it. And your mom would call out from the other room, like, why do you play a game that makes you so upset? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because oh, you loved kick stickball so much, you bitch. <laughs> what? Kickball or stickball? Shut up! You never speak perfectly either. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get paid to do it one day. What? Speak? Yeah. Okay. You can't even uh, walk on a balance beam or use right-handed scissors. So you I, use left-handed scissors? I had to. T- well, I can't use any scissors. I, I couldn't. I, my, 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 my mom had to talk the principal into into not holding me back in Are kindergarten. Are you kidding? That happened to me. Yeah. That happened to me the one year I actually went to school. They wanted to put me in the slow class because I held, I, I, I scissored toward myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing is, like, like it was kid- going from kindergarten to first grade because you're not supposed to be able to read at a college level. Uh, the the tests have nothing to do with reading comprehension. They put you on a balance beam. What? That's like how you what? test a cat, bro. <laughs> like, like, wait, yeah. what, what does that have to do? Oh, this person's going to need to balance? That ha- you, another thing that happened to me, I, I had only vivid memories from the one year I went to school, um, and then I was sequestered for the rest of my life, which we'll talk about. But um, I, uh, there was a girl named Jennifer, and she was balancing on the balance beam because we had a thing we had to do. Bitch poked me in the eye with her, with her, with her nail, and I had to be a pirate for two years in a row Jeez. at Halloween. Was this was this during the this was a this, was this a high stakes balancing thing or was I don't it just... no it was it was some you know we we all knew we had to like show the teacher that we were going to go across the tires so we were like let's let's study because I was a workaholic oh. back then <laughs> you could have been Rooster Cogburn you didn't have to be a pirate um, <laughs> or Snake Plissken True Grit yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was just telling the story last week about my, when I, I went to daycare and a girl stick a crayon in my mouth. And I, I, just, I just, just a distinct memory of the violation, the, the, the poking, the probing. What color was it? It was red. Ew. 
She was trying to play lipstick. I think she had a crush on me. I gave her that credit. Okay. Listen to the episode. It's great. Uh, but uh, so, so since we're there, I mean, you keep saying the one year I went to school because, like, I've, I don't I don't know if I've ever met a homeschooled person. Like, and I certainly wouldn't picture them as as like you know, even though. I think one of the stereotypes is like that they're not they're more they're 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 they're, ca- they're capable but you know <laughs> but you know you yeah I would I wouldn't I wouldn't guess like uh homeschooled but but yeah I mean you, you don't were like really homeschool? homeschooled you don't like homeschool <laughs> shut the fuck up shut the fuck up <laughs> you can shut up <laughs> <laughs> but you're your mom, your mom pulled you and your brother out of school when you were kids because, and, and it's because you you were hoisted by your own petard, uh, as we say on this show. Uh, petards are special pants uh, made of pride. Um, I'll explain later. But uh, the you 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 there was some sort of like like because it was like a parok- it was like a, a. Well, we went we moved to Mississippi, so we were from Alabama, which was already a problem, and then we were moving to the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Which was a big problem because that was Hickville to the people in Alabama. So that was sub Hickville. Um, and then my mom was concerned because all my family is very highly educated and it was like the worst school system in the world. Um, so she was like, let's call one place. They make you wear uniforms. Nope, you're not going to school. That was, it's, that's it. <laughs> that's literally what she did. But and your and your mom did a you know a, a, the kind of job I think we all picture ourselves doing if we tried to teach our kids in a homes as homeschooling it would the the beginning of the day slips to around noonish and yeah uh, yep. she she ordered all these like um it's called Calvert School and it's what missionaries use uh, to teach their children and they literally come in just white books kind of like the uh, the the generic cereal at the grocery <laughs> why are you creepily taking pictures of me don't worry don't worry you don't like photos. <laughs> You don't like photography? <laughs> Weird angle. Anyway. That's no, good, trust me. Okay, great. <laughs> no, that sounds gross. <laughs> I'll post it on Instagram. You'll see. It's a cool photo. He is he is a good photographer. Filter it up. Um yeah, so anyway, she 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 ordered all these books and we were like, yeah, learning. And then if, she never woke up like before oh. noon. <laughs> So I would oh. be like, well, I'm going to educate myself. So I would have a strict regimen of like lost in spaces at 10 a.m. You better do three math problems before then. And I felt like, yeah, I'm really educating myself. Like that, that was the totality of my childhood. Um, basically programming myself around old uh, noir films, musicals, uh, old science fiction things, and then eating uh, buffalo wings at the TGI Fridays. <laughs> And at one point you're like a violin prodigy, and that's like actually you're 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 one of these kids that's in uh, college at the age of sixteen or whatever, which is like like worms are in Revenge of the Nerds. Um, the uh, but what what how old were you when this this weird chapter uh, happened where your mom was grooming you to be the new Selena? Like okay, like, it's true. Okay. Uh, <laughs> It was such a strange, like, flash. I mean, we were living in San Antonio, and that's the heart of, of Tejano, so I don't know why you would think it would be un- inappropriate. I mean, <laughs> I don't speak Spanish, or uh, sing, or speak Spanish, or any of the things that you need to do to be a Tejano star, but that does not... My mom's the kind of person who will... Well, first of all, she I just found out the other day that she crashed a car into somebody in Austin and immediately got out of the car and was like, I'm Felicia Day's mother. <laughs> And it actually worked. It worked situationally in Austin. But because then got, she hit Will Wheaton. I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is just driving around your mom's neighborhood. <laughs> With Steve's camera. Um <laughs> But uh, no, she's the kind of person who we would go when she would eventually wake up. We would go and to the to the mall for hours while she browsed, and we would sit inside the the merry go round of shame. You know, you just get in there as kids, and you're like, just twirl the clothes around me, and I'll be in a different place, please God. But she would tell the Clinique saleswoman about my pirouettes, and I would be forced to do pirouettes to everybody in the makeup department at like 9 p.m. So this is, a, I mean, she's very enthusiastic about my abilities. So whenever she met somebody who could possibly make me more of a star. She would glom onto them, and one of them happened to be a Tejano producer who had a garage that he recorded music in. 
And therefore, that was like a door opening to my star <laughs> happening as a Tejano singer, which is a kind of an accordion Hispanic Tex-Mex music if you're not familiar with Tejano. It's very jolly. Uh, not to get not to get grim, but you uh, in the book, it, you, the 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 closer on that chapter is that then uh, was it Selena that she got Selena she got she no, tragically it's not was, happy it's, yeah but 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 sorry, like I'm you, I mean I don't know where you like was that really the reason why it kind of came to a close oh was no like, yes uh, she thought it was dangerous at that point because <laughs> Selena's manager murdered her no this is a terrible story it's like have you played Life is Strange. Uh, yeah, I, I, I actually did play like a couple levels of it. Yeah, so I don't want to spoil anything, but some deep stuff happens involving like assault <laughs> and what? Are you, did you? <laughs> That's crazy shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm trying. I'm streaming it, and I'm like, oh, oh my god, it's it's she's she was date raped. So I I'm like laughing uncomfortably, which I'm doing right now too because I'm sweating that I'm talking about that in any jovial way. And can we change the subject? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but oh, is that? I wonder if that's the thing that people. I, yeah, I didn't know that the game went there. I stopped playing it because I was like, "This is girl shit." But I, 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 I enjoyed it for a little while. And you I don't knew like it, feelings. I knew it was. I knew it, I was making a joke. I knew it was girl shit when I bought it. I mean, there's a girl that says "Life is strange." It doesn't have an explosion on it. And I was like, "This is, this is girl shit in a good way." I'm 42. I'm, I'm the equivalent of a girl when I'm playing video games. <laughs> like I, I, I want. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I don't. I'm not 15. I don't want to like get on a headset and yell anti-Semitic things at people that may or may not be Jewish. Um, I, 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 I want to like. Uh, do, and I thought it was really, really interesting that gimmick that they because it, that's how we've always played games. Is that you save your place and then you go back and the way that they made it part of the narrative. They rewind, was, yeah, you can rewind time uh, yeah. and be, be, be able. To, well, did you ever play? Well, I could talk about video games all day, but Braid is also. Did you ever play that because you could rewind time? Bra- and, bra- bra- uh, no. What, what did you? What's yeah, it Braid. It's it's a. It's, it was kind of one of the Braid. first. Big indie, K- Braid? indie games, yeah. Braid, yeah, and um, I think he has a new game coming out just very soon. But uh, after like seven years, but Braid, it was it's kind of like a Mar- not really Mario, but you you it's Mario ish in that you it, those are the kind of levels, but you have to be able to rewind time to actually get through the levels. Mm-hmm. So it's very it's a thinky game. Yeah. It's a hipster game, which is I'm not. <laughs> did, putting it well, down. did you? Well, okay, so a little bit more about hipster video games. Did you? What, did, did you play the uh, you know Juno and uh, Green Lantern? Uh, uh, <laughs> what? The, the the hard, the hard rain sequel, the the heavy rain. What the fuck? Oh, I didn't play. No, uh, oh, oh, Beyond Two Souls. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was not good. You didn't like that? I, <gasps> oh, I, I don't know. No, I'm not. I, I don't think that makes you a bad person. I'm like, I'm like, oh, oh, I really, I really enjoyed that, and I hated the pre, I hated the rain game. I didn't like. Yeah, well, I thought it was so dumb, and it was the exact same mechanics. But it was like, oh, they did, they figured it out this time because I, mean, I was, was like enjoying it, being Juno and like having a psychic friend and <laughs> like coming of age and like 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 the lowest. That of the was low. not a girl game. No, no I, 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 I was obviously being glib when I said girl game. I'm like, I know who I'm talking to, and the fact that you're not that the the whole that half of the point of this interview and. and your career has been like this that there is no ladies play games the irony yeah. the irony being and we were going to get to this eventually uh, but the, that that you're describing your early life which is like very very parallel to mine your experience with this new technology when we're um, at that age like you and I were both the both the first people that we ever held hands with or kissed were people that we met on computers and uh, and and in it back then ironically there was like way more accept- there was like less like um bubbling fury like it was it was a more welcoming more equal world gender wise back then i think because it was nerds against the world and now that you know, it's, it's so ironic that like all this time later that it's like it's it's there's so much more there's all this division we didn't even i mean it officially became a division like a cultural yeah. division which is so Odd, but I guess it's not odd when you realize that the technology turned mainstream. And yeah. so back then it was like you had to be, you, you know, had to make efforts, like yeah. you get that modem to dial up. Like, <laughs> yeah, and if you yeah. and if you were the kind of person that was capable of having a, a that much hatred of anybody, you were probably better at football than, <laughs> like, 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 you know, probably you ran, landed on that side of the bubble, and we're like, I'll just play football. This shit's hard. Like, like, like you gotta dial up a phone, and it's like, well, my mom needs to 
use it? And well, I tried to get one of those hacker. You know, uh, I don't know. It's a there's a hacker magazine, twenty six hundred or something like that. I remember trying to get one of those, and I'm like, I'm gonna be a hacker. I was like, they're the coolest, and I and it involved like opening, like shimming up a telephone line and opening it, and knowing wires, and I was like. I guess I'll just play the game. Part. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you went up a actual no, in real I, life? No, in the well, no. Oh. I, they were like basically in that in that get in that magazine, which I think is still going on. That yeah. they would really show you how to hack phone lines. Oh like, yeah, yeah. In order to freaking free, yes, with long a P. distance freaking freaking. I did that successfully a bunch. Did you really? Yeah. What? Yeah, I wasn't. I didn't earn it, but I just like I got codes and numbers and things, and I tr- I tried. I used it to like call places and not get charged and I called like naughty naughty things uh, <laughs> that that charge you but didn't get charged because I so used like this code. you called sex lines? I, tr- I just to see. How old How old were you? Dan, how old were you when you were doing this? Uh, 39. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was like, probably like 15 or something. 14. You didn't pay these women? <laughs> they weren't even women. They were recordings. I will. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was not like I'm going to talk to a lady. Like <laughs> I don't know how it works. Well, I never I did that. Well, I don't even. Know, I don't know either because I tried it once. I was just like, oh man, all these like 900 numbers that are about sex and stuff. And I was like, but and, and I was like, oh, so can you use these numbers like this system to like call one of those things and not get charged? And I tried it, and it was just like. You very quickly found out that it was just, you know, it's just garbage. Like, they're just trying to trick people into paying for what is like a big, long message. You know, can't hang out. Well, if you want some hot, juicy action, why don't you press three? And I'm like, okay, I'll take it hot and juicy. And then, like, and, and it was just like, like, like recordings after a while. It was just like a woman, like, it was like a recording of a woman going, like, oh, late at night, I like to wear my bathrobe and I hope my man comes home and gives it to me. Oh, oh, like, like it was just, and it was just like a shitty recording. Like, it was all. Like, it's still pretty hot. You figured it out because yeah. I abandoned it the minute I bought one. Well, and then I never did it again. I was like, okay, there's that. And who am I going to call in Hong Kong? Like, uh, like it didn't really. <laughs> but I wanted to be like Matthew Broderick, obviously. Yeah, and, of course, uh, everybody yeah. did. Or like a William Gibson that you try to read that you th- you yeah. say, oh yeah, I read that, which you did. No, I didn't read. Yeah, so it was all Matthew Broderick and uh, Al- Albert from Little House on the Prairie and that Whiz Kids show. <laughs> Remember Whiz Kids? Did you just... I never oh, watched Whiz Kids. It, was like, it lasted like 13 episodes, and it was like you know at the height of that stuff. It was like Ma- Max Gale. From who was Wojohowitz from uh, Barty Miller played a cop who, who would go to this whiz kid. It was just a total, like, it was just taking war games and saying, okay, let's make a TV show. So it was like a good-natured cop um, going to a analog for Matthew Broderick's character in, in um, uh, fucking, not the producers, uh, war games. Um <laughs> That would be a different show. <laughs> and there was like a cute, there was a cute Ally Sheedy type that was like his tomboy kind of like hoodie, hoodie wearing uh, girl, fr- fr- friend, friend, uh, platonic friend. Yes. Um, Until his, the time where she put a dress on, and he was like, Whoa! I, wait, I mean, what do you mean I have to wear a dress and, and let my hair down in order to get this Damn microchip uh, from the dance? Um, yeah, and they, would, and they would like he would he would he would hack he would hack his refrigerator like like they show they would show him this is how magical people. Thought computers were they like they would show him like typing in his bedroom and then in the kitchen his refrigerator would open and his mom would go oh and he'd go sorry mom like he's just he's just, he's just hacking the refrigerator to open and like and then he would like hack traffic lights and hack like you know he'd just hack everything but I just read the other day that you can hack a car now because the onboard computers are so complicated that you could actually hack a car and drive it for somebody yeah that's how they killed Michael Hastings what yep the government killed Michael Hastings because he got too close to the truth <laughs> <laughs> No, I, re- I remember this. I mean, he, yeah, he, what, what, what did he do? He what, just what? did a lot of really, you know, really reaching journalism that uh, put a, you know, uh, revealed a lot of corruption in a. Oh, was that the by defense? Moza? The guy who died by Moza? Yeah, no, that's the guy. And it was the big, you know, the big burnt patch of grass. Oh, I know, I saw that. Yeah. That's that the the government released a, a statement that said Michael Hastings definitely was not killed by a hacked computer or hackers hacking his computer but just as a completely unrelated public public safety note if you were hacked if your computer is hacked and you are killed it would look exactly like this I would reiterate that it is completely they actually said something along those lines it's like this is what it would look like if your car was hacked it would explode like this 
it didn't happen. There'd be no way to know if it happened, but we know it didn't happen. So it's just like the most weird, the most suspicious thing anyone could do. If you're out there and you're close to the truth, maybe get a little further from it. That's all we're saying. Yeah. Uh, this guy got too close to a telephone pole. You stay away from the truth. Stay away from yeah. your refrigerator because somebody uh, might be able to hack it. Uh, so anyways, back then. Sorry. Bl- 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 bloopity, bloopity, bloop. The big plot point of your, of your, of your career is where World of Warcraft, like, like, because obviously, or maybe not obviously, for people listening, like, like the your community, uh, 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 the weird metric to use, but I'm narcissistic, so I'm reading a book and I'm only understanding it through parallels to my life, which is happening at the same time. Like, like the world's shittiest biopic would be like cutting back and forth between what's going on with you and what's going on with me, and we're, we know we don't know each other, but it's like I don't know. There would be no reason to do it other than the fact that it structurally works out really perfectly, because it's like yeah, like during season four you're how you know, like, it's, it's, it's 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 it was it was interesting like reading it but your 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 community is based on your community college which is you uh, experiencing world of warcraft and you got seriously like i was surprised at your description of how hard the the addiction was and it sounds on paper just as you're describing in one line like video game addiction first of all you, you have a you have a tendency to laugh it off because it seems like a silly thing to be addicted to but second of all if you, with the extent that you do start to take it seriously you would therefore then lose all respect for the game but then i you, but you weave those highway cones because you're like this is fucking serious shit like i my life got because it started as a great thing that made you feel good like at a, at a low time in your life you were you were like it, it started you were you were already trying to act and doing these auditions and you're you're sort of it, it's not you're not actually expressing yourself you're not tr- close to the truth with your art um and uh and then you start playing world of warcraft and it starts putting you in a good mood and you start feeling like you actually are on honest ground and then all of a sudden it kind of takes over your life and you stop going on on auditions and you stop doing everything <laughs> and you yeah. described it like in a way that made me go oh wow this is real because and i do have i do have friends who the, the world of warcraft like 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 took took them out took them off the grid of uh, uh life yeah i mean i mean it was <laughs> <laughs> i I mean, I've seen that happen. Obviously, it happened to me. But, but I wanted to, in my, I, I didn't want, I hate it when people are like, oh, the inherent nature of that video game will ruin a person's life. Because I think that's bullshit. Right. And it's a simple excuse for um, for people's problems. You could say um, it about pudding or. Exactly. <laughs> a pudding at it. I mean, I don't. Or yeah. night bowling. Night bowling. <laughs> it's really awesome. <laughs> But to me, you know, I was I mean, the, 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 the irony was when I was actually making a living as an actor, a, a great living, like you can work four or five days a year and you're a commercial actor and you can make, you can have a great career, you make enough money to live and then you have no fulfillment in between and you can only so, take so many classes or go to coffee with so many actors and complain about your agents before you feel like, oh, this is not working for me. This isn't doing anything good. So my brother invited me to play World of Warcraft and I was like, whoa, I'm a, I'm a warlock and I'm good at this, guys. And it, it, it turned into this thing where I was getting a, this sense of fulfillment inside by just playing more and more and more. And I don't think it's inherently bad. And I think there, if you can moderate your behavior, that it's an amazing social and justifiable social outlet for you and and increasingly as we have these online worlds that are as important as our offline worlds you can't denigrate somebody's online life as being uh, escapism or destructive because we're all going to be living in a void one day you know we're all going to be staring at the uh, the construction of our walls that we want to which in my case will be a a, probably a normandy castle with some fairy servants and uh you know we're all going to be walled off into these gardens and whether that's good or bad like um you know to me i think that sense of fulfillment that i got could connecting to actual people behind those other characters was very important to me and I will always treasure those friendships and those raids and those clothing items that I won on the raids and helmets and (laughs) things like that but the problem was I didn't have anything to do with my life and I didn't know what to do to get out of the mire of of the acting and and to get ahead because as you said I went to college really early I was a you know straight A student and I was like I I can't I don't know where else to work hard to get ahead in this business because it's not merit based and um, so I just you know, World of Warcraft is merit based. I was the potion master. What's you that, know? What, what is it? What, what does rock bottom look like in a World of Warcraft addiction? I mean, I I, think, I remember a couple examples from from your book, but I mean, it definitely looks like uh, having. I mean, I'm a very organized person. I love to do lists, but I would make a to do list about what I needed to do in the morning to do 
World of Warcraft better. So I would literally have a strict like 8.15. You need to wake up and uh, have a coffee and then wake on, uh, log on by 8.30 so you could do a half hour of farming of Dreamfoil. And then you have to commute from um, Ash, you know, Ashara to whatever other region is to get the other herb. And then you have to start this herb. And I would literally like list it out. I had a very comprehensive – I would have been a really good WoW secretary for, my, for anybody. <laughs> um, but you then, also described – well, you, said you described your internet going out and you driving around in your car crying because the internet <laughs> – was out like. yeah yes that's true that <laughs> happened too <laughs> and uh yeah no, so all those things kind of added up to like having two three characters and you know playing 12 14 hours a day and then going to sleep dreaming of being a cartoon character and then waking up with an agenda to be more cartoon characters and um it was inherent in just the place that i was in life that i used that as sort of a a, a balm um, to fill the hours that I didn't know what else to do with um, because I didn't know how to be fulfilled otherwise. So, I mean, I got out of it because I got in a, a, su- a support group, which is terrible. I hate saying that word. It's just so dorky. Um, based on the secret, which is even worse. But anyway, uh, it's it actually got me. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. I feel you. Remember the secret? I know. Nope. Nope. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago. It was, it feels like, for, it's like I, five, six years six ago. Six years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so basically I had this w- group of women who were like, hey, come out and s- share your victories every week. And my only victory was like, I leveled, got a new helm. <laughs> and they were like, I don't understand this. It's and, gaming. And you justified that by saying you're going to write a pilot about that world. And you eventually did. Like you have a valley in there where you're like, you're like, this addiction is more power. It's not like you're going from the joy of World of Warcraft to writing a pilot about it. It's like, wow. You're like, you're like, you're like, you're like a junkie in World of Warcraft. But then you get out of it by stopping playing it and writing about it instead. And uh, you write this pilot. And then like you and your friends from that group based on the secret. Like, I mean, it was tangentially. I did not know. <laughs> Oh, it's based on the secret. They read, um, they read like the back cover of the secret and said, "You can do whatever you want." And they're like, "Let's form a group then." Okay, <laughs> no, no, don't say. It. Was that really the truth? Because that would be even sadder. Um, no, I didn't know it was on the. Se- I think it was just tangential in the forming of the group before I was there. I, and I don't mean to. Uh, now I'm sweating. Anyway, so it was fine. It was four or five ladies, and every week we'd get together. And I wrote the script, and nobody wanted to make it because they were like, "I don't understand how you use a computer to talk to other people with a game." Because that was you know seven eight years ago, and. Um, people were uh, not that savvy um, and YouTube had just started so my friend was like let's shoot it and put it online and that was literally the start of everything I've done Um, just kind of braving the terror and deciding to pick up a camera and shoot yeah and you hunkered down and like the description of the shit the the amount of work that you guys uh, put into that thing well, not accepting help from a system that was like, well, we'll we'll do this, but you know, we'll own it all and stuff. And you, you repeatedly kept resisting that urge, and we're really one of the first. I mean, because this is back again, another. You know, I'm going like, I remember, I remember then. I wasn't paying any attention to what you were doing. Well, you were I had doing my channel 101 stuff. But it was stuff. channel 101. It's like I did a couple of those like uh-huh. randomly, and I thought that was. I mean, I but I never would be. I acted in a couple, but I never would have been brave enough to pick it up. Because I, I didn't have any experience filmmaking, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, what you did was, like, revolutionary in that it was internet video before internet video was a thing, right? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Channel 101 predated YouTube, but then you're doing this in, like, a slightly post-YouTube world. But it's, like, it's all the beginning. And, like, certainly the, the idea of a web series, like, now, um, I mean, y'all that's what Call of the Cards is. Yeah. <laughs> of course, about the guild. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the guild. Oh, thank you. We haven't said it. Yeah, so. my it, web series is called the Guild. The Guild, the Guild. Uh, but yeah, and uh, Yacht Rock was one of my favorite things in the world. Like, it's truly a masterpiece of cinema. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we were in like, that. We were in it. <laughs> Demorge was in it. But the guild lasted six seasons. Six years. It was six years of videos, and we actually weren't on YouTube except for the first season. So we shot the first three episodes, and I tell in traumatic detail about shooting in your house, which is not a fun thing because people will go number two in your toilet copiously and then you'll have to clean it later. Um, which is, I'm a hypochondriac. I don't want anybody else's. Uh, poop in my house and uh i have to say that that's the one chapter where it was like she lost me <laughs> because, because of my channel 101 background i'm like i'm like because like, you're i i, I would not with not thinking that you're a bad person but just thinking like oh no we might have not been friends or something if we had encountered it because of like chapter yeah i about... left a diet coke can under your couch mattress i fucking i was a, okay. i was boom operating for eight hours <laughs> 
<laughs> like, it's your show. Okay, listen, I, I was trying, I had to read, that was actually the hardest chapter to write because I wrote it, because I, I don't know if you, you start to believe your own mythology or you're just so used to telling people about the story and I was so grateful and I was like, I would list every single person who came for free and my editor was like, this is not good. Like no one, I understand that you want to thank the Kenny who is your podcaster who showed up to, to set every single day and you know, um, and all these other people that you're listing who volunteered, uh, Colleen and Bob who were furries and they donated their furry costumes to <laughs> season five. Like, and I would go in copious <laughs> lists of trying to thank everybody and then in that chapter she was like, you have to be funnier. So that was why I took the angle and yes, the co- can ring on my dining room table pisses me off because I, I had to do like a monk guest star to pay for that table because uh, I was gonna go, gonna go to Ikea but I was like oh I got a guest star I could get a table a real yeah. lady table so um <laughs> But That's like, ironic because Monk uh, isn't he doesn't he like, uh, uh, he's like exactly. Sherlock Holmes but he hates like uh, soda yeah. rings on the table. Yeah. yeah, he's like you didn't use a coaster, you murdered him. And yeah. they're like, no, I didn't. He's like, who's who are you going to believe? I'm Monk. Um, <laughs> I've never seen the show, but uh, <laughs> you got it, you nailed it. Uh, the uh, but but well, I, I agree with your publisher, whoever said that. The, yeah. um, because Editor. you know it's it's a couple of pages or uh, twenty minutes of audio during which I'm like, well, you know, come on, you, uh, who cares if someone uses a coaster? Um, but <laughs> you're it's important because you're planting the seeds there because this turns out to be a, a very actually. Uh, needlessly because it could have been a good book anyway like you're and you're a likable person and you're sharing your story and people want to hear it but you really like crucify yourself like as <laughs> as it go like you walk all the way up Golgotha with this and it's like it starts with like like you know diet coke rings on the table but yeah. you're you're taking that somewhere and like you're very very confessional and thorough about chronicling a nervous breakdown yeah and which you, started you, way earlier than I would ever would have thought and not and before I wrote about my story you know I well, you I, the word panic attack from the beginning to, like, and I was like I wonder if she means real panic attacks or like if she's uh, uh, the, but oh no real ones like I can remember vividly I, I auditioned for um, and it was actually when I kind of broke away from acting and was just like I'm going to do the web thing for a while I was testing for a show called like Samantha Who which was a Christina Applegate show and it was oh, yeah, me yeah. testing against Melissa McCarthy and an Asian girl and I was like and it was Melissa McCarthy before she was Melissa McCarthy. And it's when she was just Asian. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. She had a lot of surgery. It's interesting. Um, I mean, her community came down on her so hard about that surgery, but it turned out it made her a superstar. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> they always say, don't get the surgery. Yeah, be yeah. true to yourself, except don't in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but I went in and I tested for that, and I literally had such a panic attack that I could not... I mean, my hand was, I, I'm not kidding. It was the most, and, and, and when I had a panic attack, and I, would, I noticed, you know, in, in going through a lot of therapy and stuff like that, like, oh, you were plagued with panic attacks your whole life. And out of body, like, kind of looking like, wow, you're terrible. Like, I can see what you're doing, and it's not effective. And um, it was so bad, the audition, I walked out, and it was the most ashamed I've ever felt in my whole entire life. And at that point, I was just like, I think I need to back off and just do um, the web more. Uh, but I don't know where I was going with this. It well, was very t- traumatic. I mean, oh, the tra- the it's attack. the guild that starts to consume you. Ironically, you create this thing, and and, and again, I, I I relate to this. Like you're 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 at the height of your you know your you, your your story goes from a meeting with the goddess, which is like Comic Con, and you're hanging out with Joss Whedon, and you're like, I can't believe I I built myself without permission. You use the phrase without permission, which was like, yeah, exactly. Like like, like I did this without permission. Um, and and then like the the second half starts to take because it's if you haven't like checked in about this like compulsion you know this engine like if the whole time everyone's just going like go go get them go get them and you're the whole time you have like these little ghosts in your head so then you start to get with nothing else to destroy you but yourself you start to destroy yourself kind yeah, of like a little you, bit yeah I mean you know essentially I mean we were shooting for six seasons and it seems like oh you're so suc- I mean we were successful we had a little bit of a budget but essentially we were making extremely low budget movie in my house for six years I was the only writer to ever write on the guild and it was so and, and not only with that that I did all the social media all the marketing all the appearances all the coordination I mean I would be on the phone like trying to get the cast 
to uh, a convention. Like, where are you? Okay, I'll go meet you outside with a badge. Like, there was no possible way to delegate in my behavior as well as just not having resources. I mean, we had no resources. So it looks like we got fancier every year, but we when we did, because everybody's expectation was higher, but we really had no more resources or support to make it bigger. And basically, I did it by just literally working myself almost to death. And, um, and, and I would never trade that for anything, but um, I, I don't, I don't know if it was the most healthy way to do things because when I started adding other things on, um, like a company and other projects, like that's when I really started to collapse. Yeah, so I, uh, I guess I, I haven't collapsed yet, but I don't know if I'm gonna like, 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 because it, yeah. Then I was like, so then the parallels stopped because you're like, oh, I figured this out, and I'm like, wait, how'd you figure that out? Like, like, because you're like, because the, the doctors said like you're getting like horrible heartburn that could put you at heightened risk of esophageal cancer, and you're like, well, wait a minute, that's my de- deal breaker. I'm not gonna affect my. I, I'll be crazy, but I'm not gonna let it affect my body. So then you just decided to stop being crazy, and I'm like, what? Um, I mean, I, I just not if I phrase it like that. I'm still, well, I'm definitely you, still crazy. Guys. What, what you said that I can't understand is that you 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 know you realized that the th- I don't uh, paraphrasing you, but you realize that the things you do are not who you are. That, that I mean, that is a realization that I intellectually understand. And sometimes I feel it in my heart. But I don't know, especially if you're in a business where you are something to someone that you're not somebody. Like if you're in a position where somebody knows you, um, and that's fame and, and, you know, like what small amount that I have in, in very interesting areas. But like the minute you are a, a, in a situation where um, your work is basically in, in that kind of um, external validation is important to getting what you want done I think that starts to mess with your head and your value starts to kind of like be sucked out onto your skin your outer self I don't know is that weird uh, what I, I can't get too <laughs> weird for me in this area I mean I, I don't know like I'm a full-blown like I didn't know because the word my therapist just starts to use this word workaholic and I'm like well doesn't that mean productive like I'm not <laughs> Uh, and, and it doesn't. It doesn't any more than alcoholic means like for, you know, uh, fun drunk or you know, it's a, like you can be something aholic and it doesn't have to be like a super great version of it. And I guess I've always I'm like I, I, this is a serious problem for me. Like I, that I have yeah. to confront now. That's like the, the root of everything that's going wrong in my life. What are you doing? I just I'm just I don't have I don't have an identity outside of what I do at all. Like 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 mm. this show is, like like is a huge part of keeping me sane because it's a way for me to 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 do something yeah. while that involves being human <laughs> uh, and and fulfilling myself yeah. uh but but like so like because I, I don't i don't my, you know i play like, like sort of my therapist she's like what do you do to recharge what do you do to fill up what do you do to relax and as i play video games and yeah. she's like okay so what do you do in the video games and i go well you know i'm like a witcher and a i mean you know, yeah like, there's a, sh- a lot of shit to be uh, yeah, solved gotta, there like, these peasants are really and she's put like upon. so how is that different if i if the if the if the ghoul is uh is a guy from dreamworks how is this different from <laughs> From from the life you just described, that's incredibly stressful. And I said, like, "Well, okay, I guess that you, you're right. That I would, don't think that, that would follows. make a good movie." What? I don't. I don't think that's a good comparison, though, because it's like. You, have sp- you met this guy from DreamWorks? Oh, I'm just saying. <laughs> sports sports are very intense. You could get really worked up and stressed out just playing sports, but no one would say you got to stop playing sports, man. It's cutting into your. Well, I, I think that those people exert exert themselves and also there are probably people who shouldn't be using sports because it does stress them out but i think that i think that typically people who do physical things they get they exert themselves and then they physically like have a catharsis you know because they wear themselves out and then they go and they have no choice but to but to take those big deep breaths and relax themselves and set their nervous system back to zero but where i i don't because i i know she's right because i know for a fact that when I'm sitting down to play a video game, while I, I'm absolutely like, I can't wait to do it. So you would, th- so then you think, oh, I'm doing this to take a break or relax. But I'm just like, I'm just using it to avoid. Like I'm using. Yeah, but what it else to, are you gonna do? That's a valid like, thing to do. I mean, that's like, what I'm saying. I get pissed off. I'm like, okay, therapist, what do you do? You watch The Good Wife every night? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, I, how the fuck? How is that better than actually participating in a story and projecting yourself as a uh, really hot? Well, my, if, I, if I said that, my <laughs> therapist would say, "Well, I curl up in the. I don't watch TV and I don't use Facebook. I curl up in the arms of my lesbian wife, and I'd be like, high roaded." <laughs> 
She probably she probably really does like watch sunsets and shit. I mean, how is that better? Listen, I I mean I'm well because it's two lesbians doing it. First of okay, all, okay, well. <laughs> So how is it worse? Uh, I, I mean, I think I, I think that if you find a sense of meaning in something, and yes, I, sometimes you just want a little bit of emptiness. Like that's what TV's about. Like, well, I think the difference is it's like stimulation versus yeah. like like coffee's a stimulant, and then pot like kind of makes you giggle and fall asleep. Like I think that so she the, just wants you to have more lesbian pot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 um, that's the scissoring thing, right? The the. Yeah. <laughs> The, the I think I, I no I think she's I think it's accurate I mean I was like I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't be- if if there wasn't some truth to what she's saying like I wouldn't believe it but I because I'm I'm miming like an Xbox controller in my hand and I'm like <laughs> I'm like I, I it's, it's it's like I was like oh I'm gonna now I'm gonna do this because it's like I want to like I want to jump over to doing the same thing but numb my brain yeah I don't I'm not like taking in I'm not like refilling my soul but what is <sighs> I don't know I mean, how I, you do that. I don't know how you do that. I don't. I mean, I think it's relative. Like, what? Are you supposed to learn French I don't, or uh, go to go to meet friends? I find it so ponderous to go out well, if there's not a point to it. Yeah, I mean, I like find if it, we're not playing board games or bowling, <laughs> I don't understand how I'm just supposed to sit there with a drink in my hand and talk more than thirty minutes. I don't know. Should I, don't I know see either. your therapist? Do you want to see her? Yeah, let's talk to her. I don't know. Now I'm sweating because let's maybe I'm more up. messed up than I can, thought. Can I, can, I, can I just bring you in in like a box? And, uh, and she'll be like, what's in the box? I'm like, just more work. And she goes, mm, workaholic. Still playing those video games? And we're like, yeah, tell me what you were saying before again. And she's like, mm, you got you to gotta hang out with your wife and just watch the sunset. And then I'll open the box and you'll be like, hello. <laughs> hello, I have an opinion about this. I got this. a bone to pick. <laughs> I mean, um, if I weren't playing video games, I would honestly be, I would be, I would, I would think that I don't feel alive if I was not learning something. So I would be like, I'm learning French or Esperanto, or I learned Mandarin Chinese for six months because I needed to go to the gym and it sounded good to do that. And I, is did, that true? I did. And I watched a Jet Lee movie and I, I picked out seven words and I was like, my God, seven I'm amazing. Words. I'm so amazing. <laughs> But they were words like Coca-Cola, uh, <laughs> baseball, <laughs> Tom Selleck, uh, <laughs> night bowling, <laughs> and punch. Yeah. Um, the uh, yeah. Well, I don't. I mean, this is a big topic to me. I want to figure this out. But I, I think that you and I both don't have the answer. But I. I think mean, isn't that, that you... just retirement? I don't know. I, I. I mean, I would. I would. I would feel like I was wasting my life if I was just. I mean, looking at a sunset is nice, but it doesn't need to be all the time. It should be a treat. Right? And, it, and it does always <laughs> just set. Like that's all it yeah. does. If it's it was, like, yeah. Boo! Like like. Uh, these super moon people, like they're not going to be relaxed tonight. No, they're... that's the, literally some be- werewolf is assaulting a, a, an old woman right now because of that moon. That's a that's a big problem in LA that yeah. we're not we're not talking about enough. Um, Silver Lake beards. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, it'd be awesome if I'm sorry, I'm a little high, but it'd be awesome if you made a like a jet that went the exact speed that the Earth rotates, and you could. Literally just follow a fucking sunset around the world for f- until you ran out of gas. That would be possible. Wait, is that like a? Is it like a? Ch- I missed the top. Is it like a chair? Is it's it? So like you a make jet. like a jet and you could just um, chase. And so it was just, like solar powered, so you, it just never had to fucking stop. And, and you're just you're just Johnny Sunset. You just oh, always man. yeah. Isn't that Apollo? Like the Greek myth of Apollo is that he did is that? It? I don't know. I no. I think a, I think Apollo's myth is that he had a wagon with the sun as the wheel. Oh, I mean, I don't know if he or Aurora. There is there is a god. They were a, a hot god who had sex with animals. Did that? It sounds okay? like Apollo. Promise. Yeah. Um, no, but the thing that I do for relaxation, by the way, that, that I feel centered is I watch House Hunters and I see all these stupid <laughs> bastards who get to quit their job and move to Denmark because they've always wanted to. And I'm like, I want to do, uh, one day I'm going to do that. And then I feel like I've centered myself. That like, sounds stressful. What? <laughs> but, I, but I think I know what you're talking about. When I watch Intervention, I'm always like. Oh, there you go. <sighs> <laughs> I like, that, Forensic files for me. I, like, that guy. I, I had never seen one until about two months ago. I was in Baltimore in a hotel and I started like, watching it. At least and I'm I could not, not fucking stop watching Forensic what is, files. What is it? I've never seen it. It's. 
It's, <laughs> it's a fan right there. You know, really hard to solve cases, and they break down how they eventually solve them. And you know, they use luminol every time. <laughs> And then, and then every once in a while, they can't use luminol because uh, the criminal had used a technique to make it luminol proof, which the show cannot disclose. Bleach. Uh, uh, <laughs> like, I, like they're that worried about about their, their show having that effect, but it's like, come on! What I'm learning from your show is if you're going to murder someone, own a boat. Like, like, like no body, no crime. Uh, uh, Shonda Rhimes. <laughs> a, sorry, what? Uh, uh, wait, yeah. There's so, so, wait, somebody else has a wait, uh, Leanne. No body, no crime. Leanne Rhimes. No, that's the same syllable. What's luminol? Luminol is a just blood detector. It's like you, if I kill you, uh, or if that guy kills you, let's. <laughs> Uh, the guy in the Pokemon hat. You can mop Gosh. up all the blood, and it looks, you know, it looks like it's gone. But then they spray luminol, and they shine a black light, and it's just like, oh, there's all this blood. Damn, it detects man. the iron or something like well, that. That's good to Is know. Is that new? They didn't have no. that with Murder She Wrote. Well, <laughs> well, she didn't need it. She had mental luminol. It's true. <laughs> Did you ever see Angela Lansbury as the Queen of Sheba in like the '60s? She was hot as she f. She was really. Was she was beautiful. Yeah. She, huh. was, she played the Queen of Sheba. It, was it like Cleopatra or was it Queen of Sheba? I don't remember, but I've, I've seen photos of her young and she was really good looking. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I thought you uh, meant like her babies. Her young. Yeah. 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 What are you talking about, you guys? Oh, shit. You didn't bring your book out here, did you? I did. I didn't bring it, but I got her books in the uh, in, the, in the green room. Because 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 a big uh, uh, not a big part of your story, but uh, the recent part of your story, and we don't have to talk. It's 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 oh, gotten boring it is, to guys. talk about. Uh, it's my book. It's a New York Times bestseller, so they can't take that away from me ever, That's which is nice. pretty awesome. We could talk about Gamergate for an hour and just suck the energy out of the room, <laughs> which I which I which I don't think is a fair legacy to. Uh, it's nine eleven, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I don't want you to get the wrong impression, but we just we get excited about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but would you mind reading like you have you have passages in your book because I think it's funny and also empowering and and kind of subversive of the intent of people who 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 come after people under the banner of uh, of, oh. of, of 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 online like I mean fun. I could read the beginning of just that chapter just about some horrible yeah I mean like uh, and- yeah leading up to the I thought oh man she should read this out loud because it's sort of like because I'm listening to you on the audio book and hearing you read the comments that people leave the intention being for you to like I mean the way that they speak you would think that their intent was for you to just go and hang yourself or quit yeah. forever or judge you know it's like and it's it is weird it's weird the internet is such a sewer and then it's so like like for when people get so specific and so targeted it's like wait are you when I when I heard you reading this stuff out loud that I kept thinking like oh this must be their worst nightmare because these are their words and they're supposed to like somehow... Well, they have a lot of imager pictures of how it's not completely their words except it's just one tweet. And then, of course, that discredits my whole argument. But um, <laughs> but there must be what we know of these people. Like, I think it was, didn't Orwell have some quote about if you look at the way people, the weapons they use to attack people, then you know everything that scares them. Like, it's, just, it's almost sort of an, a, 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 an uplifting like fairy tale irony to it when you see people go after people that hard and that viciously because you know even though it seems cartoonish you know that that means that there's something you could say to them that would make them cry yeah I mean I've found I mean the funny thing is before that whole incident happened last year I had finished my draft of my book and there was a a chapter about negative comments which if I I'll just read just the first part and some of the nasty tweets that that are out of context of that incident particularly because I'd rather just not give them more uh, coverage but um, and, and so the, the chapter existed about trying to weather negativity online and how especially because the roots of that particular incident that was just a confluence of a bunch of um, you know a, 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 basically it was a Chan attack mixed with some conservatism that gave it a label mixed with men's right activists and it was like a swirling vertex of literally the worst of everything coming together to me that's my perspective and, um, and, and so but it, the roots of it were sort of a backlash like we were talking about before of gamer girls and I'm sure we've all seen those memes uh, from like three or four years ago of like gamer girls said and it's this girl with the little 
chunky glasses like mine <laughs> and uh and it's basically mocking her and saying that essentially that this girl is adopting these things because somehow um she's trying to get attention or be uh make these gamer guys as sexually attracted to her but she's really a fake so um that was really i think the roots of sort of this festering thing that built up over the years that kind of exploded in that incident in particular but like i've experienced a lot of this in the chapter before um it, this even happened and it really you know uh, several times I, I really did want to quit you know I did not want to make videos anymore and I believed them because underneath if you're an artist you're kind of insecure <laughs> so when you have that many people on mass get together and say hey you're horrible um, and, and I'll read you know just a little bit at the top uh, yeah it's a good time to quit if you're not having a great day exactly like, like, yeah. yeah exactly um, so I guess I could read just one page or something like that um, uh Okay, I have a folder labeled hate folder. That yeah, this sits- is this is the one. I okay. interrupted you to 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 say <laughs> <laughs> I got it right. Guys, I've nailed it. Um, I have a hate folder labeled hate folder that sits in the middle of my desktop. It's where I save screenshots of the worst things people have said to me online. Fifty Shades of Felicia. Um, for some reason, it takes the sting away to herd all the toxic comments into the hoarder, corner of my hard drive, aggregating the losers I'd like to hunt down in real life and ro- run over with a dump truck. <laughs> then back up again and run over them again. Too far? Huh? Okay. <laughs> if it's too disgusting to say to another human being, I guarantee that someone has said it to me online. The internet is amazing because it connects us with one another, but it's also horrific because it connects us with one another, (laughs) whether we uh, want the connection or not. The only real life analogy I can think of is if a random person were to allow to walk into your home, punch you in the face while you're eating your oatmeal, then walk out again with no fear of consequences. After one incident, you'd be looking for a new zip code, wouldn't you? (laughs) So... uh, (laughs) Here are some fun examples of the human awfulness I've collected over the years. At Felicia Day, a woman using her sexuality to profit from male gamers and pretending she's empowering women and progressing quote-unquote gaming culture. Her nose is so fucked up. (laughs) Did someone hit it with a sledgehammer or what? At Felicia Day, congratulations, you have a vagina and play video games. Now do something useful. (laughs) That's my favorite formula, by the way. It's like, like I, like I don't have a vagina, and people uh, tell me I do, and it's really no. Uh, really? no, no. But like, like, like the people, like, like if I talk about Minecraft too much, someone, someone eventually will go, "We get it. You're a celebrity, and you play, and you do nerdy stuff. Get over yourself." I'm like, what in the fucking no, fuck? Today, somebody what called are you me. Talking about? Yeah, they called me the Kim Kardashian of nerddom, and I'm like. I'm not nearly that successful. <laughs> but it's that we get it thing. It's like you shouldn't be allowed to you that doesn't make any sense. Like, hey Steve, yeah. we get it. You got a cap on and you're sitting behind a microphone. <laughs> like it just sounds like been there, done that. Oh, we get it. You're mo- they're lowering your mic. Oh, we get it. The cap's back I can't on. Win. I can't win. Oh, we get it. You can't win. <laughs> it's not fair. It's like it's like the Agent Orange of like. Well, it's criticism. almost like people people who are probably shamed for what they love trying to shame somebody else for those exact same things. It's a, it's a little bit uh, unproductively uh, and ironic, but in, in her fault, it really is her fault because I think um, at the end end of the day, like I I am who I am because I was rejected a lot and I never felt like I belonged anywhere. And now that I have been able to break out of that and and show people that it's acceptable and be be. I I guess more mainstream or more visible than I have people telling me that, hey, um, you're just a sellout and you're pandering and you don't believe any of this or um, you're useless and your nose. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> if you honestly think Felicia Day worked hard to get where she is, eat a bowl of fucking nails. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. That's not even the worst ultimatum. Yeah. Like, it really is. Eating like, nails. Eat a bowl. Oh, fine. I mean, I'll get by. <laughs> It's not like, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. He's Sp- bad at insults. Spencer grew up on a farm, and he has one of those cylindrical super magnets in his stomach. Oh, really? Because he because he grazes by the fence posts. Yeah. He eats a lot of nails. It's yeah. just a fact of life on uh, in Simi Valley. And I get through it. So he thinks everyone has a magnet in their stomach that lets them eat nails. Well, anybody could. That's what counts. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I have a lot of thoughts. Do you run a lot of conspiracy websites? I really don't. I didn't even... Earlier, a couple episodes ago, we asked if I had any conspiracy theories, and I was like, nope, but apparently I have one. (laughs) Michael Hastings. No, no, I think most conspiracies are kind of, you know, 
They're, they well, everyone knows about conspiracies. They work backward from the result they want to achieve. Yeah. Do you want me to read more of this? I yeah, do. I think there's, oh, okay. a, there's a C word coming, right? Oh, yeah, on, yeah. I you mean... want me to read more of them? Are you going to get me to say this word on... on okay, okay. Um, why do gamer girls always use the nerd the term nerd, geek, and gamer? Can't Felicia Day just shut the fuck up? She's nothing but an attention whore that uses her gender for as a key for attention. Tell me, would you have subscribed to this channel if Felicia Day wasn't a girl? If you say yes, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Someone tell that redheaded cunt that the kitchen's down the hall, not in front of the camera. <laughs> All right. That's like a, that's a, that's, a, right. that's, a, that's like a sixteen-year-old using like uh, like nineteen sixties Catskill like, like comedy that he would if his dad said that he'd be like dad. <laughs> you know, it'd be like, like father knows best. You could see like uh, Frank. Uh, what if, what is that guy's name? Frank, Fred Murray I hate him He's dead right <laughs> That's my that three a, sons Fred McMurray is that what? Fred McMurray Father Knows Best was um, Robert Young Robert yes. Young Okay so that was, No that's Freddy Krueger Did you know that <laughs> Did you know that Fred McMurray Never was in the same room With those children though Like he would shoot His three all of, sons Yes he would shoot All of his scenes in advance Like in a separate unit, and then it would be a double with most of the things. He come no, in and I do think a that couple... was William Frawley, who was the uh, also in the show, but he. Oh, it was William Frawley. Yeah. Why he, did he, he do it? Did he hate children? He just didn't want to do the show, or <laughs> he would. Yeah, he would shoot all his stuff out in like you know like a couple days, and then they would just fake it. All right. Well. Let's spread another rumor that's not true, Felicia. About you 50s just, dead people. Can you just pick to do that? You're like, eh, fuck all these other actors. I'll just just put me in a box and Didn't that I'll happen on The Good days. Wife, though? The Good Wife, she CGI'd the, the last scene Oh, with yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah those monsters. Yeah. <laughs> not the women, the CGIers. Anyway, CGIers. Do you want me to read more? Or uh, I, think, I don't I know. Mean, if, a, if you have any favorites, no. I feel like I'm putting you through like, know, one of those uh, meat grinders now. No, but, I'll t- I totally read. I mean, it, essentially, the rest of it is. Oh no! Not, you know, yeah, I mean, it's it's it's. There were the good. The good one is a tweets. Like I, you know, yeah. I'll see something like that every day, but then I'll see hundreds of more positive comments. And you know, the cool thing is that I just went on book tour and I went to 13 cities, and you know, going out in the world is, is strange to me. And, um, and but the coolest thing was there were so many guys who came up and bought the book and they were like I'm buying this for my niece who's 13 or I'm buying this for my daughter who's 16 and I just love the idea that there were these fathers and and guys who were who didn't really know what to do for these girls who were at this age that you probably would abandon the cool things that you might love like you know gaming or anything anything that made them feel less po- po- popular or likable um, it, that they wanted to give them any tool that they could find right. to be as who they are and I think that was the coolest thing to reset thing that I things to the way they were in 1983 when it was like yeah. look, look we're too nerdy to be caring about something that our like our uh, World War II like like right, now, I'm, now I'm denigrating vets um <laughs> <laughs> we Tejano stars. Right, Nick's Harm in town. A bunch of guys come up with like the caps, and they're just like, uh, "Why?" And they're like, "What?" And they're like, "Why did you say that? You're terrible. We fought for your country." Um, no, but I was. I'm just saying, like that. That era. It's like, why are these like like we're de- we can't possibly are nerds that successful now that we're able to like split down into like camps? And I don't think so. I think these are people no. that are having a bad day or something, and they're like because it seems like from what they're saying, it's just almost like comedically over targeted like to me well, some of the worst things I hear are when people are like you know it's the whole meh thing it's like like, yeah. like that's it's like well who cares like fuck you I'm bored with you or what you know if you really if you really 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 do dislike somebody well I always say like the opposite of uh, love isn't hate it's apathy like it's it's the silence that hurts people like us uh, yeah. more than the attention and it's the I mean when you when you like come after somebody I just think I think that it's so it's so the, the thing that's really weird about it is because I, I have a 15 year old misogynistic little prick inside of me I can access it and I, and I have one in the trunk of my car too um, <laughs> I have jars of them in my basement they, they <laughs> But but like I, I can I can I can run that simulator. It's not that it's not like the circuitry that isn't able to go down there with a couple of switch flips. And and when I run that simulation, I'm like, like the thing that outrages me is like, why is everybody trying to make something that's like mine and personal and fucking awesome and it's all about being radical and honeycomb hideout? Um, 
<laughs> like, like, like what, what, what is all this bullshit talk about apologizing and backpedaling and sensitivity and all this shit? It's like, it's, it's just ba- like, like, and it's, it's the weird thing is no one, no one had to be doing that until, and it's just like this weird syndrome of, I mean, I think it's, okay, the yeah. culture grew to the point where, okay, there's points of, of overlap where, where, where somebody says something and then somebody reacts in a weird way, and then it requires, like, the talk about sensitivity. It requires all that stuff. It's like, you ruined it, you know? Like, 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 like the, the person who has that complaint, it's like, it's like you, it, it, now it's necessary for somebody who wants their niece to grow up in a, in a, you know, in a, in an environment where she can flourish. They have the responsibility on them to do things like stand behind you publicly if you get yeah. doxxed or whatever and say, like, this is fucked up and you guys are fucked up and fuck you, Adam Baldwin and whatever. Like, 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 let's do it. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha back. Uh, um, um, the the it, it, it it's now it, it, like because if you don't now you're, you're like not. well it just pisses me off because I'm always the kind of person who I like to be genderless in a sense that I am I, I'm not putting. Uh, you know, a gender, like a, a mending girl gamer. Like that's not something that I need to do because that essentially gives gamer to the default to guys. Right? right. So that's just the way I think. I don't, but, but, but I, what, what kind of enrages me is that there is an increasing need for women to have their own esports league or women to have their own thing in order to be, and they've st- shown studies that it makes women more confident to participate in things that are not traditionally women, uh, female driven, which I'm like, no, just get up there. Be one of the guy. You be there and be equal and be represented as a person um, but there is this need on the internet especially when you're in little ecosystems to, to call people other you know oh you're other your race is different your sexuality is different your gender is different and you should be ashamed of the differences that is essentially where the the, the kind of power I guess is motivated um, because there are different kinds of people coming into the, these worlds and with then different you have people opinions. saying we should be hypersensitive to the differences and then you have other people going like I'm hypersensitive to the idea of hypersensitivity well yes and, th- and then I mean, it's, it like, gets... it's just like round and fucking round we go oh, because yeah. it's when the it's when the it's when the frustrated like like semi moderate people who had nothing but suppressible rage that could have <laughs> yeah. could have remained suppressed until they were forty, but they you know yeah. it's coming out because they're like they're being asked to pick a side and an issue that doesn't have to be an issue. Yeah. Like the whole every it's almost like everyone is agreeing that we don't want to live in a world where we have to have the fucking conversation twenty four hours. Well, that was the whole thing. I wrote a blog post about you know uh, it was a kind of a, an essay about how the, at the height of Gamergate like. We need to stop doing this, and we all love gaming, and we need to show a positive face. And when I saw, you know, because of so much hatred that I was getting, I was like, you know, I saw some guys in some gamer shirts, and I would assume that we would have been like, yeah, high five. And then I was just like, I don't want to deal with it. I crossed the street. You know, just kind of, and it was almost unconscious. And I realized because people were really attacking me and shaming me, and that these the, those kind of comments were like twenty times, uh, you know, at the height of that incident. I I was subconsciously changing my behavior based on someone basically fucking up what I love, a culture that I love, and something that I love, and I've always wanted to spread the love of and show people, hey, gaming. I mean, I spent the most time rewriting the real World of Warcraft thing because I really wanted to show people how awesome it was to play MMOs and how fun it could be. And somebody aunt could read it and understand why their you know nephew would like these kind of things. So during that, that's why I wrote that essay, which led to people posting my address online and a lot of people now just saying I'm afraid of gamers, which is like literally the opposite of what I said factually. Right, and your thesis wasn't even, this is another misunderstanding, when people talk about these subjective subjective experiences, they're not saying... Um, this thing happened to me that is a crime that needs to be punished. They're saying this is the experience that is happening to me subjectively, and I, you know, I, I am a big, fat, straight, white, bearded male, uh, middle aged that has uh, never had anything but good fortune. But being in the spotlight, it's nothing to complain about, even the negative parts of it. B- but it is imp- it, it, when, when you know, when you've like run afoul of the public and people are tweeting at you around the clock you should kill yourself no one likes you why the fuck are you in my newspaper you dumb piece of shit um the guy was fletch why are you doing this um <laughs> like 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 and it's just like it it erodes at your psyche and there's nothing to uh, i deserved it like and it but i but it, it's important to note like how how much it freaks it you the people. fuck out so if you do happen to be like me but 
have a vagina and have people that have wieners like tw- say, saying like, like adding that edge to it where they're like I know where you live I'm gonna fucking kill you I had somebody I, yesterday uh, you know. like at a convention and this this guy came up and it was like I, I I love the furniture in your house and like and at the time you know you're signing I'm signing hundreds of autographs I'm like oh you know that makes me uncomfortable and I'm like and I signed and I go away and I and, and I then I looked at the guy, the, the handler with me. I was like, did he just really say that? And then I'm like, okay, A, he's trying to freak me out because he's trying to use the power, you know, just either he's a, a, a troll and he's like, look what I did, guys. I went up and, you know, said this. Or, you know, there's a possibility, like, could somebody have a camera? Like, it has to go through my mind because I've literally had people in my house. I have restraining orders against people who are, you know, have taken it so far and to imply that those kind of threats aren't as, you know, emotionally damaging and also potentially threatful, especially if you're in a public uh, in a public forum and anybody on the internet can find where you live. Like, right. this is a real There's thing. There's been actual dudes in your house. Yeah. Like, like, there has and that's not been a person, That's yes. not the thing that you're, when you write that blog entry, you're, that's not what you're, ta- you don't, you don't lead with that. That's no, not, that's I don't not the want badge to. you're wearing. It's not about yeah. crimes committed and recompense needing to be done. You're saying, in that in that blog entry, you're going. How did this fucking happen to our culture? Yeah, everybody needs to stop being hateful because you're making gamers look like assholes. Like right. that's what I, the point of that was, and, and and especially from a point of like we we all love this together. Let's figure it out and agree to disagree with respect because it just got to the point where it was crazy. And thank goodness a lot of people have spoken up, uh, especially leaders in the in in gaming and like gaming companies are taking it seriously. And it just like to me, I love it and I want people to know that gaming is amazing and you know that really is the future of our entertainment is gaming I just went to this thing called The Void and literally I put on some, an Oculus and a backpack and I ran through a maze and I thought I was in like a Skyrim I'm not kidding look up The Void it really I did it in person it might be the most amazing thing I've ever experienced and I realized we are going to be living in all uh, worlds that intersect with nobody else's or we will be adventuring truly in the worlds that we want to escape to now just in passive fiction and in 20 you, years, it's going to be crazy. Have you, have you put on the Valve yeah. thing? The... I, the Valve thing is nothing compared to this because I what? was actively running through. <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm not kidding. This okay, thing is well, crazy. I've, 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 I've uh, the, the Valve is the top that I've experienced so far. Just look up What's the void. This thing called? Are you it's on called one the of those void. Treadmills. No, no, no. It's a literal. Run. No, it's like a. It's like a paintball arena. This guy knows. Just look up the void. It's like it got three million views on it. And oh, wait, is it AR or VR or, it's, or TR? It's, or? it's V. It's VR. It's like a holodeck. So you have an Oculus on, which is not, a, it's not, cu- it's like a customized Oculus and a backpack, basically. And you put it on and you turn it on and you literally step through a portal and you're in an Indiana Jones ruins or you're on a spaceship and it feels, and you're shooting. It's not hard to stand up. No. I noticed with the first time I tried Oculus Rift when it first came out, it would make me really nauseous same, a lot of Same time. with me. This one, you're literally walking through and, and there's, so basically they're skinning, they're skinning the walls and they're skinning seats so that if you look at a seat like it's a green block right in reality or like a gray block but in my in my oculus it looks like a a, a archaeological archaeological tomb and really you could feel it and it looks like you're feeling i'm not kidding guys yeah there's a fire they also have a wind so you look out on a waterfall and you have wind in your face and you in the game think you are looking at a goddamn waterfall and there's a there's a salad bar and it's got yeah it has a and there's a there's a there's real salad in there, but then but to you it looks like chilled monkey brains. <laughs> I remember the story. Snake surprise. <laughs> remember that guy in Temple of Doom? That yeah. guy loved scary food. I was like, sir, have you ever had a Snickers bar? Like, you would have been great on Fear Factor. I understand the idea is that there's cultural definitions and there's some things that are scary to us. Maybe you find del- delicate, but but uh, but but these are baby snakes <laughs> slithering around. And I understand even maybe you'd go, oh, I like to eat these. You know, I'm used to them. But he's like snake surprise. He, uh, like, he's so he can't. He's like chewed <laughs> monkey brains. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I'm like, I feel like you're protesting. Like, 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 like uh, so, so if I bring the, 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 we, the wedge iceberg, you know, the, the iceberg wedge over to you with just some nice ranch on it, would he go like, it's just no monkey brains? Maybe. <laughs> Did you do the valve oculus with the kitchen, though? Did yeah. you do that? Yeah. What did you automatically do when you open the fridge? 
Uh, I broke all the eggs. I threw them against uh, the wall. Well, I, I can't. I, <laughs> he dropped a carrot in the pot. You know. <laughs> Well, I also That's all he did. I also I, and and everybody under eighteen, like uh, plug your ears, not for what you what you think, but I just want to share something with uh, my 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 fellow my generation buddy. Uh, I I within three minutes I was I I, I was trying to slit my throat with the knife. Wow! I, I was just like I was like. A, <laughs> to see if you could do it. Yeah, I was just like, well, that's a real knife, like, like, but it's not it's slid in my throat. Wow, this is real. This is shit. Dangerous technology. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it was like, fuck it, I'm making soup. No, I. Oh, I wish you were here. I was trying to explain that to Jeff Davis, who usually sits over there, and and he's like, what? What is it? Like the croutons are real? Do they do, do they use a a, 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 a oregano Can sauce? Two, I'm like, Jeff, you're not saying it's not. It's not realistic soup. I'm saying you're Can making the soup. Can two people put on? VR goggles and go into the same space. No, at the I was same in time. there. I was in the void with another person, and I saw the halo. The, she was kind of in a halo, and she was shooting, and I was shooting. I was like, "There's a spider behind you!" And I was shooting her, and she was like, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> "There was not friendly fire, basically, in that situation." Oh uh, no, but that's the next. I mean, does that make you as a storyteller like want to tell something, like do something storytelling? E in <laughs> that. <laughs> what are you okay? I don't even know. Get ready for a surprise. Uh, thanks, 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 Bill. Thanks, uh, everyone born in 1973. Thank you. Total Recall, the original. Um, the uh, it, may, it no, it really freaks me out. It, it, it excites me and kind of scares me because I'm like, oh my god! Since the Lumiere brothers, we have been like every all storytelling has been like through a two dimensional pain, and it's like. like <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Teresa Lumiere, everybody. Uh, it's her birthday. She's 130 years young. She was the she was the DP on Horse Walking Out of a Warehouse. Uh, <laughs> please put your hands together for her. <laughs> the, the diva of of oh wait no the the fem the fem of ah, fuck it as you do like an illiterate the fem fatale of, of photography. photography. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, the uh, 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 the uh, 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 storytelling. Uh, well, yeah, because yeah, it's like um like oh this is so exciting, but then I'm like oh if anything puts me out of business, it's like it's like I might not be able to make that leap. Might not. Listen how pretentious I am. <laughs> Uh, that, uh, evil Knievel might not make that canyon. That might be the grandest canyon of all. I may have to hang up my American flag helmet. Uh, I, they thought Bigfoot would get me, but... That's a $6 million man reference. Uh, the, uh, yeah, it's weird because what's going to happen is we're going to understand we're, you're, you're going to have to write stories even more so you, you, like like beyond like David Mamet ta- you know writing how people talk as an audience is watching a stage you're going to have to just create you're going to have to become an expert at creating awkward moments i think because you're going to want to like new stories will be like though though you know I'm not saying we won't still enjoy watching people run from explosions and make dynamite out of chewing gum or whatever, but but fighting werewolves. But 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 the technology is going to be really, really, really good at you know you walking into a party and and like you're just noticing things and you're just a fly. You know, like well, that's this what is we love like, to do. What, what is your therapist going to say? Because I personally think, as a gamer, like people will be more drawn to doing things in group like literally going well, on also vacation. relaxing things i think my therapist because i really you're bagging on her a lot and i want you guys to get along i want you'd like her if you met her um the uh, no she <laughs> could watch a virtual sunset with her lesbian wife i think if, uh, she's not she's not like a luddite about it she's like if i was playing like pop the pop the pop the cherries or whatever <laughs> Pop, yeah. pop, like, 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 make pop the cherry, pop, pop, pop the bubbles on the on the this frog world, you know, like, like something on my iPad that was like, if I if I told her, it relaxes me, and I could be honest about that, she'd be like, great, why don't you go play that iPad and relax yourself? But you know, she knows, and I know that I'm like, I'm going like, I got so many monsters to kill, I gotta, and I'm, oh, I gotta get that special armor for that horse. So until I do that, I'm like, ring, ring, that's UTA. Hello, yeah, I'm gonna write that screenplay. I'm gonna write. Real good, see? But first, I gotta talk to Chris McKenna. I'm gonna do it. I gotta write the thing for 
Universal and then write the thing for Fox. But if I do that, I keep my studio running. I got this $3.9 million a year overhead. And I'll go say, okay, I gotta get that special armor. I gotta go say, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a success here and I'm gonna be a success there. And it's, it's not gonna be any different, see? Except this is faster and it's better. And I just, okay, uh, 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 oh, I just nodded off. I walked into a wall. Oh, shit. Sure. And I, I just like play it until I'm, I'm, I'm asleep. And then I go, like, okay, I'll go to bed now. <laughs> and I go, I'm awake, I'm awake. Gotta go to work, gotta go to work. No time to shower, no time to do anything. Okay, all right, well, what's, why am I Joe Pesci? Why am I, why? <laughs> Why, why, why am I this little, tiny, like, messed out d- Jewish producer? <laughs> I want a dame in every picture, see? Huh? But I, 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 you're not allowed to smoke cigars anymore, so I'm vaping and it's not working. <laughs> I do a lot of vaping in my car, see? I want a movie about vaping. I see a six-picture deal. I see Hasselhoff. I see Ringo Starr. I see Bethlehem. Uh, uh, why do I see Bethlehem? I'm fucked up, guys. Uh, <clears throat> wow. Don't, don't applaud. <clears throat> that was a written character. Don't applaud it. I wrote that three weeks ago. Uh, I'm doing a one-man show. What's it called? Uh, Billy Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> colon. Uh... uh uh, uh, the 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 characters I am. <laughs> oh, Jesus and it's Christ. like it's like ninety characters, including the old blues man. When I was playing the blues, I used to play the blues so good. Thank you, thank you. Now the old blues woman. When I was playing the blues, oh. What? <laughs> Wow, this is great. $60 a seat. This is more than comedy. This is kind of art. Because he's drinking water in between his sentences. I got food in the mic. I got so excited. I, don't, I still don't understand how... Because so, I play video games and I get relaxed, but if I play like competitive games, I get horrible acid reflux and I can't, I can't do it. Like I play Heroes of the Storm with my brother. I'm like, God damn it, get behind the creeps. You stupid girl, you stupid... Oh, dude, I don't play. I, was I having, can't do it. I, I was, can't. Well, I had, so I, I had one experience where I was playing a, 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 a Left 4 Dead 1. Um, that was scary. And I just accidentally stumbled into like this group of like, you know, I didn't ask because I, I was middle-aged and it would have been weird to ask this even if, what, no matter what. But it was like I got the sense that I stumbled into a group of – of of younger guys that knew each other from high school and that were that were either gay or bi or something because they just like they seemed they just they they were they they didn't they weren't calling me faggot every five seconds is one thing that I was like I think these guys are gay yeah must be Uh, because they because they're they're not fucking calling me a faggot and the n word they call you the n word all the time I'm like I do not have that honor sir I shot you again god damn it and you're trying to argue with them like the guys are like fuck you I shot you again and they're like like, like uh, um, here's the thing they're like shut up faggot and, like, and, and I'm like uh, nice one and they're like oh nice one and I'm like fuck you fuck you fuck you <laughs> like you can't I'm like I'm five fucking won an Emmy I won an Emmy <laughs> uh, I won an Emmy uh. was it a was it a faggot Emmy a faggot Emmy <laughs> no Best music and lyrics. So it was. I beat the Muppets. <laughs> Look it up. It was the best. We get it. You won an Emmy. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> call, call, call back podcast you award. Um, all right. Well, let's. Hey, will you? Will you uh, I don't know if you're into gaming or anything. Will you stay out here and play and play a, a shadow run with us for ten minutes? Oh, the new one. It's the new one. Well, uh, no, the, it's uh, the expansion, the Tokyo or Hong Kong. It's, I, 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 look, 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 we get it. You play Shadow Run. <laughs> I'm actually in the game. We've been. Mm. We, well, you're, you're talking about like the Shadow Run electronic. Yeah, stuff, the like, actual like the oh, video game. We play. We play like. Uh, we're playing, oh, that's like, cool. Yeah, sure. Analog. I actually. Well, I, I produce a show um, where we do D and D live on Twitch called Critical Role, uh, and um, I it's because I played a, a campaign for three three years just for 
fun um, for my old improv group, uh, you know, um, and I played a, a, a high charisma, very low intelligence um, sorceress who would just be like, fireball, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care you're standing there. I need a fireball. I got three mobs. You're dead. Uh, I think I've worked for you at, at NBC. <laughs> That's, that sounded like so many conference calls. I'm like, um, is Tamora here? Tamora, you back there? You want to? Tamora Brown. Uh, Hello. I know. Is that is that enough people? I could never figure this out. I think so. But you always say it that way, and then that makes it sound like there could. I don't know. You need what? more. There's enough people. <laughs> See, that's that's exactly what we need. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Well, who who said that? Come on up, exuberant, exuberant man. Whoa, boldness. He's taking the hard way up. Yeah. My dog chewed on my glasses. What's, What's your right? name, sir? My name is Dewey. Dewey. Uh, you look like a Dewey. Thank you. I was named You're after welcome. John Candy's character in Stripes. And I'm Dewey Oxberger. Uh, oh wow. Yeah. Shit. Wow, a yeah. kid named after a character in the movie I saw when I was 20. <laughs> I'm going to just uh, dig a hole, lay down, and uh, hand you the shovel because my back will hurt uh, from, from digging the hole. <laughs> I remember when Steve Martin was hosting the, the Oscars. <laughs> I, like, I, like young, the, I, like, I like talking to the young creatives of today because it reminds me of my death. <laughs> uh, uh, well, welcome, Dewey. Thanks for coming up. Uh, well, I don't, it's not like you're doing us a favor. You shout it out. I want to be up there. You're welcome, Dewey, is what I should I have, be saying. I have very right, little self-control. Let's, uh, I've noticed. What's, what, Have you actually played Shadowrun before, Dewey? Oh, not in my life. Well, yeah. you're unqualified. Get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no authority no, stay, here. Hey, the Dewey. kitchen's stay. behind the wild camera. Card. You. Be a wild card. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, so Felicia will give you the first choice. You could be the character my wife usually plays, who's like the face man. Uh, 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 God damn it. I can never get these names straight. Um... What? I can't remember Aaron's character's name. It's uh, Mer- Mercy O'Donnell. O'Donnell. She's sort of like she's like the smart talker. Like she gets us the jobs and stuff, and like like cons uh, people and stuff. All right. Uh, oh, Je- that's not bad. Jeff Davis's character is Eve Libertine. She's like a sprightly uh, fucking uh, I don't wizard. Even know. She's wizard. a mage. Um, Do you have uh, a decker? Here, give this down to Demorge because he's here. Now we don't have any deckers. They're actually really complicated. So yeah. not like that, but but so none of these guys actually know how to play Shadowrun. So. <laughs> And then, and then there's like a mob, a, a mob doctor named Dr. Friend. I don't want to be the doctor. Okay. I'll be... Um, <sighs> Mercy O'Donnell, the face man, or the face lady, or... or I'll be the face lady. Okay. That's how... I like I like having a high... A lot of skills where I talk my way through things. Okay, so... And then what do you want to be? The doctor? Or Oh, yeah. Well, just... We'll, we'll have... Um, hand that down to Steve Agee. Dewey. All right. And then hand this down to Dewey. Dewey, you're going to be Dr. Friend. Dr. All right. All right. Um, you the, the, you yeah, know how to the, play the, the, the contractual I'm timer. Learning. You're learning. Okay. Stuff as we go. Yeah. Do my best. Shit, man. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's um, we never know what's going on. I don't remember what we did last time. We're always this drunk when we start playing. There's like a drawing from Rick and Morty here. Look at it. Is this how? Is this where it oh, happens? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we don't have any musical cue, I'd assume, right? Oh. That's fine. Don't worry. Oh, shit. I just want to confirm All right, verbally. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little something. I mean, wow, my phone just turned blue. <laughs> have you ever seen a blue screen on an iPhone? <laughs> That's yeah, no the, good. Well, the new one came out, so. Yeah, yeah, good point. So the, all, of, all of these are dying. Well, it's a good thing that nothing happened last week. Um I was going to read Jason Clymer. He's the one who recapped the last time we needed a recap. I was going to read his recap because it said, The gang walked around in a storage facility arguing about what they should do. Eve Liberdeen sent out some crickets. Nothing happened. 
Ooh. End of recap. Yeah. It was something like that. Yeah. All right. So yeah. we got we got a lot of fresh faces. So I'll do like a, a real, like an actual verbal, not prepared recap. So you had entered StoreQuest, the storage facility, a multi-floored storage facility. You walked in the front door and started accosting, accosting the, I guess, the cashier at the storage facility. And then you murdered him in cold blood. <laughs> After that happened, you walked through the door that you could have always walked through the whole time without killing anybody. (laughs) Sending out some crickets, you tried to search for your quarry. Your quarry was a big load, a big storage container full of MP3s. MP3s that were locked by specific, very high security musical locks. If you recall, you learned perfect pitch from a strange conservatory for the sole purpose of defeating these musical locks. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> They're locks that unlock with music. Okay. Well, yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's all that happened. You guys were arguing. You're standing there on the floor. There's a dead guy in the other room. There's cameras everywhere. You don't know. You know. Yeah. You were just talking to Hack Eye. He was the, on, the, on the phone. Yeah. Hat guy or hack eye? <laughs> hack eye. It's like Hawkeye, but hacking. Okay, it's a, it's gotcha. a bad joke. <laughs> yeah, hey, ha- hack eye. Uh, are you? Hey. A- I think the conversation we were having is: uh, uh, w- Were you able to uh, parse the uh, any information to give us more? You know, zero in on the. No, I mean, I told you that there's no of that. There's none of that information available. It's there's nothing like that. I mean, you're looking for a vault that's locked with. Mu- I don't know what you're saying, man. You look. You're looking through a vault. You're looking for a vault that's locked with musical locks, right? Are, are musical locks maybe different than other locks? Let me let me look this shit up. I've literally never heard of a musical lock in all of my shadow running days, but I will look it up and get back to you. Okay, I'll, I'll just walk around and look at all the locks. <laughs> All right. You do that. You see, you see a vault that's locked with large, large magenta locks. Hey, guys, check it out. (laughs) It's not like any lock I've ever seen. Looks like one of those musical locks. (laughs) Is this going to open if I sing? (laughs) Like, is it that kind of musical lock? I don't know. Do you smell egg on the log? Because I have a moderate egg allergy, as it says here, and I cannot be near egg. No. There's uh, no might, eggs. Uh, might I uh, suggest that uh, one of us uh, possibly to uh, start off singing a tone, a pure tone, like we've just mm. learned, yeah. to see if the lock moves or adjusts in any way? I was in show choir. So. <laughs> Ice cream. Whether it works or not, that was a beautiful song. <laughs> <laughs> song. Um, yeah. I'm going to look at this lock with my image magnification uh, monocle. I have a spy monocle. You do. It reveals several details about the lock's construction. Holy One, shit. One, the, de- the, 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 the lock's casing is made just of regular-ass plastic. And two, on the back of the lock is engraved a specific... It's, there's a very specific set of words, almost like a sentence or a message. Ah. The words, they say, Frankie Franks, album one, track two. Oh. Frankie Franks. Frankie Franks, album one, track two. We got to find that, that album, that track. It's, we already have it? Yeah, the cricket, the, the cricket brought it back. It the cricket brought it back. <laughs> Wait, the cricket brought back an MP3? Yeah. Well, let's oh. play that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll put it. In, I'll put it. Put somebody. Put it in their uh, uh, player. <laughs> I do not have an MP3 on me, but I have a moderate egg allergy. So please. <laughs> no uh, I one. have a uh, skill soft that I uh, could apply uh, it to. So if we imply it, there, I could actually play it possibly. Yeah, man, you can jack it into your brain hole. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was Saturday night, <laughs> and you were standing by the window. It's very beautiful. I said, I love that look. The lock on snaps you. open. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we took all those fucking lessons together. <laughs> uh, those fucking children. <laughs> As the roller door rolls open automatically, you see stacks of no, boxes upon boxes full of MP3 data chips. It's a real mother load. Oh, These uh, are very valuable, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best Christmas dinner I ever had. That's a, a, a clip from the from the Die Hard trilogy video game <laughs> on the first PlayStation. Was that the arcade game where you were like fighting? Yeah. Well, there was uh, uh, three Die Hard games. One was like Crazy Taxi. Uh, one of them you're just running around th- like a top down third person thing. I loved that one. And when you found when you'd find health ups, he'd go. Sometimes he'd just say random things. One of them being. It's the best Christmas dinner I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he got hit, he'd say, sometimes he'd go, all things being considered, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> MP3 chips, more than you can carry on your own. We can carry all of these. More than that. Um, I still believe we can carry all of these. <laughs> uh, well, how, okay. Well, sorry, I missed that part. There, we can't carry all of these. I believe we can carry. I them. start eating these MP3 <laughs> chips so that they sit in my stomach. Quickly, Doctor okay. Frank, uh, uh, please ascertain if they're made of uh, egg in any way. <laughs> <laughs> they're you not. Do some sort of scan. Oh no, you could just tell by looking at them. These are the <laughs> egg-free ones. Oh, good. <laughs> Is it possible to load them, uh, the data from them without using the physical casing? Oh, yeah. You could definitely rip all of them, but it takes some time. Oh, yeah. I, I'll be right back. I got an idea. I'm going to go to uh, outside. And didn't we come here? Oh, we came here in an Uber, right? Yep. <laughs> Shit. I come back. Uh, I, uh, I had an idea, <laughs> but I kept picturing us as having a car. <laughs> Maybe you should get one. Well, you know, but we drink a lot, and I think that <laughs> all things all things considered, you know, I think we're saving a lot. That's not how driving works in the future. We, we, they let you do it drunk? Yeah. <laughs> the computer does it for you, man. Guys, we gotta get a car. <laughs> Maybe we can take all of these MP3 pairs and uh, uh, sell one and buy a car. I'm well, scared someone will hack our onboard computer in the car and kill us. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, hold on. I know a guy that died. I'll that be right things. back. I'll be right back. I got a, I got a second idea. I run out. I'm looking for right. a car, just a stranger's car. All right. Because, you know... Also, it's yeah, a storage. No, you find a car. It, it is a storage facility. I would think that there was a lift or a, a cart of some kind. There's like a loading dock. I mean, there's carts. You don't know where they are, though, because you killed the guy. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my, uh, you know, knowledge as a former um, law enforcement officer, un- including my undercover training as a, as a criminal. Oh. M- my backstory is very complicated, and along the way, I certainly learned how to hotwire a car. I have a cellular glove maker, so I would make a glove uh, <laughs> that can lift everything and, and float it away. <laughs> you couldn't make a glove that strong. The glove maker is for fingerprints and stuff. It's for spoofing fingerprints. Okay, so this is not going to work. <laughs> How about you load the chips into me? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great that's idea. That's your solution to everything. I'll be, <laughs> then I'll be your, ju- I'll be your jukebox, your storage facility, your carrying facility, your transporter. But what? someone would have to pull out weapons and guard the door, and someone would have to feed at the same time. Mm. I've noticed that feed. I can increase my body. Could I possibly get larger and carry more? Uh, yeah, definitely. It'll, okay, it'll help you that. somewhat. You do that. You get two larger. All right. <laughs> I pick up twice as many chips as before. Well, that's not how the math works out. <laughs> you pick up 45%. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> 45% more chips. You're still woefully away. Uh, you're still not nearly, nearly to cat gathering them all, though. It's going to take some time. The car, it gets hot wired. Vroom. Best uh, Christmas dinner I ever had. <laughs> Where are you going? 
it's getting a handle. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know where, where am I? You're outside uh, the place. I'm gonna drive through the through the doors and up to the up to the storage unit. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna flip a bitch. Is that still a phrase? Yeah. And then I'm gonna back in through the doors. So I'm pu- pulling up. So it's like what from their point of view. I said I'll be right back after that first fuck up, which was a little embarrassing. Over time they'll forget it though, because the second time I said now I got a different idea and I left and then and I came through. It's kind of cool. Yeah, your car smashes through the loading dock. It arrives. It, it pulls to a stop right outside the thing. Uh, uh, you guys call it a car guy. <laughs> No, we didn't, but <laughs> awesome. Yeah. He did when he's suave. Yeah. He's not French. He's going to be suave. Uh, I have a... Fr- <laughs> Open the trunk. Let's start oh, shoveling yeah, this yeah. shit in. Hold uh, on. I, yeah, I, the- I, I, and I would like to use uh, my adrenaline boost uh, to help both in strength and in uh, velocity as I move these faster and faster and faster. Both your strength and your velocity are improved by your adrenaline boost as you load MP3 chips into the trunk of a car. Uh... <laughs> Soon, all the chips are loaded in the car. Excellent. I did nothing. It was great. (laughs) Imagine being the guy that grew two sizes. (laughs) Yeah, there's no decrease body on my list. (laughs) Do I need to walk home or... (laughs) Hop on the roof, dude. You can disperse it if you want. All right. I want... If you want. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. Very much. That happens. <laughs> Returning to normal size, you realize you could fit in this car. <laughs> you hear Hack Eye buzzing in on your on your earpieces. He's like, "Hey, man, I was I was looking up musical locks and I I, I was slipping. I was slipping. I didn't I didn't kill the live video feed that gets pro, you know that gets sent to the police station. So." You got talk, about 30 talk. seconds before this place is surrounded. You. Get in the car! Get in the car! <laughs> I, I, the plane! But wait. <laughs> so the cops are going to know what we look like forever? Oh, I mean, they already know what you look like. We're shadow runners. Okay. Uh, get Everybody the fuck in. out of here. Let's get the fuck out of here. I feel like someone did not do their job properly. <laughs> yeah, I fucked up. All right, let's talk well, about In his later. defense, we always forget to bring him. Because <laughs> he's a non-player character. Uh, uh, everybody in? Yep. All right. We. Oui. All things considered, rather be in Philadelphia. <laughs> Cliffhanger! Yeah! Felicia Day, everybody! You know her. You've doxed her. Uh, get her book. You're never weird on the internet Almost. throughout the season. Almost. Yeah. Uh, yeah, check it out. It's four and a half hours at 1.25 speed. Jamorge Brown, uh, Dewey, Dewey Newcomb, Steve Aging, Dan Harmon, Ju- Just- Justin Marshall, our feral audio producer, Zach the audio maniac, Chris Baruff on the camera manning. Kevin Day, uh, Felicia's cousin, who's met him, met him I think five times in his life, uh, who is responsible for making the streaming stuff happen. Thank you, Kevin, and who probably was our connection to Felicia. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. And- Did you get any of that? It's a good show.